Hey y'all, welcome to my Farina guide as of Genshin Impact 4.2. The long-awaited Fossilor is finally here, and she doesn't disappoint, bolstering an immense damage bonus, healing bonus, on-field damage, and hydro application. Farina takes the cake as one of the strongest characters in the game. I'll be covering everything you need to know about Farina, so let's join her play. As per usual, let's start with her talents. Farina's normal attack is not much to play up, since they don't do much damage. But the main takeaway from this talent is that when she casts her charge attack, she will switch Arca alignments. You can tell what her Arca alignment is by the color of her clothing. Shorter hair and darker clothing is Uzia, while longer hair and brighter clothing is Numa. Changing alignments will change what her elemental skill does, so let's get into that! Farina's elemental skill has two modes that will change depending on what her current Arca alignment is. When Farina is first swapped onto the field, her default alignment will be Uzia. In the Uzia alignment, she will summon three Salon Solitaire members, the Jean Talam Usher, the Sarantandon Cheval Moran, and Mademoiselle Crabaletta, that will periodically do hydro damage to nearby enemies that prioritizes the target you're hitting, based on Farina's max HP. On top of that, if characters in the party have 50% or more of their max HP, the Salon members will consume consume the HP of those characters and in exchange will deal more damage. These summons do have a timer on how fast they can attack. The Jean Talon Usher will attack every 3 seconds and apply Hydro once every 2 hits, Cern Tundon Chevalmeron every second and also Hydro application every 2 hits, and Mademoiselle Crabaletta every 5 with no ICD on their Hydro application. If Farina is in the Numa alignment, those Salon Solitaire members will instead be changed to the Singer of Many Waters that will heal active characters nearby, scaling off of Farina's max HP. HP. This mode does come with a downside. The Numa variant of Farina's elemental skill can only heal, no hydro application, and damage to enemies at all. This basically means that even though she can heal, you're better off not using it unless it's in the overworld. The alternative is running another healer in the team, which you should be doing because of how her burst works. Farina's elemental burst, let the people rejoice is the main reason why she's absolutely amazing. On cast, it will deal hydro damage based on Farina's max HP and causes your party to go into the universal revelry state. In this state, whenever any party member's HP increases or decreases, Farina will gain one fanfare point for every percentage point of HP that changes. Fanfare points buff your damage and healing bonus based on how many points you have, including Farina's, up to a cap of 300 fanfare points. The ability is especially powerful since her burst has an uptime of 18 seconds whereas the cooldown of the ability itself is 15 seconds. This means that you can always have these two buffs active at all times. Both of these buffs will scale with higher talent levels, and you can come out to have a really high bonus of both effects. For the damage bonus, if your talent level is at 10, Farina can give your entire party up to a 75% damage bonus, as well as a 30% healing bonus. The second of which can help you get fanfare points faster along the way. Since you gain more fanfare points depending on how much your HP changes, you can start with the HP drain of her skill, use her burst, then use another character's healing abilities, and you can easily stack them up. Last note is that you can also get a rough idea of how many fanfare points Farina currently has by the size of the audience that appears in the foreground during her burst duration. Farina's first ascension passive boils down to just giving more fanfare points. What it does is that whenever your on-field character is receiving overflowed healing by a source that isn't Farina, this passive heals another party member's HP by 2% every 2 seconds for the next 4 seconds. Not big enough to consider in your rotations, but since it's by 2%, it will give you 4 free fanfare points over its duration. Farina's fourth ascension passive is really good. For every 1,000 points of max HP Farina has, up to 40,000, the Salon members from her Uzi-aligned element skill will have a 0.7% damage bonus, up to 28%, and the time between each tick of healing on the Singer of Many Waters is lowered by 0.4%, going up to 16% faster. Pretty good bonuses across the board since you should be building her for more HP anyways. Now that you know how Farina's talents work, which one should you level first? For her talent priority, level up her burst at the same time as her elemental skill, as those are the biggest portions of her moveset. Lastly, you can leave her normal attack talent at level 1 to save resources. Now that you have an idea of how powerful Farina is, how can you get yours to perform? 
Before we dive into artifact stats and stats, if you want to maximize Farina's damage as much as possible, leveling her to level 90 is the first thing you should do. Since she mainly scales with max HP, that will be the biggest increase at a base level. Now, Farina has a few options for her preferred artifact sets, with one pulling far ahead of most of the rest, so let's go through them. To start off, Farina's overall best set at C0 is the 4-piece set of Golden Troop, as it boosts elemental skill damage, and even more so if the holder is off-field. Farina's elemental skill makes up most of her damage so this effect is amazing for her. Not to mention, this set is extremely efficient to farm because it's paired with Mare Shose Hunter. Farina single-handedly opens up the option for every character to use the Mare Shose Hunter 4-piece set bonus due to the HP drain mechanic of her salon members. Next up is the 4-piece set of Tenacity of the Millilith, some HP percent on the 2-piece and a buff to improve on her support role for any attack skilling DPS. You do sacrifice some of her personal damage with this set, but it can provide valuable support. Her skill has infinite uptime with basically unlimited range, so this attack buff is essentially always active. Third is the 4-piece set of Mare Shosei Hunter. Keep in mind that this is mostly only good with her C6 effect when compared to Golden Troop, which I'll get into in a little bit in the Constellation section of the guide. But with that in mind, C6 allows for Farina to be an on-field DPS with her normal and charge attacks, so this set becomes a very good option for her. Lastly is any mix of 2-piece sets that involve HP% percent, skill damage, or hydro damage bonus. All of them are pretty good to use on your way to the 4-piece sets I mentioned earlier. Now that you've got an idea for what artifact sets Farina prefers, what stats should you prioritize on her actual pieces? As a note, Farina ascends on crit rate, so she gets a free 24% by the time she's ascended to 90. But let's talk about the main stats first. On her sands, Farina will usually want HP% percent to improve on her own damage, as well as healing if you care about it. But you may want to use an energy recharge one if you don't have enough through substats since Farina's burst makes up most of her value. On the note of energy recharge, Farina's ER requirement can widely vary based on a lot of different factors like teammates, weapons, and so on. Although her ER requirement is even more inconsistent due to her summons all attacking at different times. With that said though, Farina will generally want somewhere in the ballpark of 180-200% to 200 or more if you're using her as the sole Hydro character, 160-180% to 180 if there is at least one to two other Hydro characters, or 120-140% to 140 if you're using Triple or Mono Hydro. Of course, this is different on every account, so figure out what works better for you and if you can afford to use an HP sends or not. For her goblet, Farina will want HP percent. The reason for this is that since her burst also buffs her own damage, the damage percent gained from it can often overshadow the need for a hydro damage goblet. If you are also using the golden troop 4 piece set, this can be especially true. Although from her constellation 2 onwards, hydro damage bonus can be better due to the effect of the constellation giving Farina a lot of max HP. Lastly, for Farina's circlet, she wants crit percent, whichever crit you have less of. In terms of your subs that focus on Farina, like I said earlier, prioritize artifacts that have ER until you can use her burst for every rotation. Secondly and thirdly can be HP% percent or crit percent, since they are just as valuable as the other for her damage. So now you've got her artifacts, but what weapons are her best props? Farina has a decent number of weapons that she would prefer to use, so let's go through them. Starting at the free options, moving up. First is the Fontaine Fishing Weapon, Fleuve Sandro Feriman, that you can fully refine with enough fishing. Gives a nice 45.9% energy recharge secondary stat and an effect that boosts elemental skill crit rate by up to 16% at R5, and for 5 seconds after using an elemental skill, the wielder also gains 32% more energy recharge. This weapon is great for the skill crit rate, sure, but it also allows you to look for more HP% percent or crit percent in your substance because this weapon gives so much ER. Second is the Festering Desire. Same exact recharge secondary stat as the Fleuve Sondre, but instead of more recharge in the effect, it boosts her elemental skill damage instead. These two weapons are basically opposites of each other and give similar value to the other. The only problem with Festering Desire is that it was only available during a version 1.2 event, so if you started after that, Tough luck. Besides that though, both of them are fantastic weapons overall. Moving on to the gotcha or paid 4 star options. First one of this category is the Favonius Sword. If you are finding it hard to get Farina's burst back on cooldown, using Favonius on her will help her immensely and lower her ER requirement by a fair amount. Next is the Dawkins Assistant. The effect can be nice since healing is a major part of Farina's whole gameplay, so it's free EM as well as energy regeneration. Note that this weapon is a limited event banner weapon, so it is only ever on the weapon banner. The last of the 4 star options is the Battle Pass weapon. 
Wolf Fang. Gives a substantial amount of crit rate with an effect that boosts skill and burst damage and gives crit rate to each of those abilities whenever they hit. Decent weapon overall, but if you find that you need more energy to get her burst up for every rotation, I would suggest using some of the other weapons I mentioned before. Let's cap off the weapon section by going over Farina's best 5 star options. Light of Foley Incision, Misplit of Forged, and Haran Kapak Futsu are all not that great on Farina and generally do about the same as Flo Santo Feriman or Festering Desire, and those are better off anyways due to their inherent energy recharge stats. For the weapons that can be better though, we have the Key of Kajna Suit, Nilo's signature weapon. It's got a huge HP% percent secondary stat and even more in the passive, and Farina appreciates that a lot. Not to mention, whenever your elemental skill hits enemies, your team's EM is buffed by a portion of the wielder's max HP, which for Farina is a lot of HP. Next is the Primordial Jade Cutter. This crit sword only ranks higher than the rest so far because of the higher end crit rate secondary stat and the HP% percent in the passive. Not much else to say except that it's a really good HP% percent and crit rate stat stick. Last but not least, Farina's signature Splendor of Tranquil Waters is her best weapon. It's a huge crit damage stat stick and whenever the wielder's HP changes, they get an elemental damage bonus. Also, whenever a party member's HP changes, the wielder gets a boost to their max HP, which also makes Farina do more damage. This weapon will of course force you to build more recharge if you want your burst up at all times, but if you can manage that, her damage will be unparalleled with this weapon. And those are good weapons for Farina. She's got options for both more damage and consistency, so pick the one that works best for you. With the build out of the way, let's move on to Farina's constellations and see if she's worthy of an encore. Every one of Farina's constellations can all be seen as major upgrades from the last, ranging from quality of life upgrades to huge damage upgrades. Farina C1 is pretty self-explanatory. When you use her burst, Farina will now start off with 150 fanfare points, giving you a head start to the damage and healing bonus. And the maximum number of fanfare points she can have is now 400 instead of the 300 she would have at C0. This basically means that you do a lot more damage, making this a very good budget constellation. C2 is probably the best early constellation to stop at past C0. Farina C2 makes it so you get your fanfare a lot faster, with every percentage of HP that increases or decreases giving Farina 250% more fanfare. Also, with every fanfare point that Farina gets over her cap, she gets 0.35% more max HP, all the way up to 140% additional max HP. This basically means that her HP bar can be double its original if you manage to cap out the effect. This is an amazing buff that not only makes it so your team does more damage faster, but also that her attacks are now super buffed thanks to the max HP that Farina gains. C3 and C5 give 3 talent levels to her burst and skill respectively, with C3 meaning that she gives more of a damage or healing bonus for each fanfare point, and C5 buffing Farina's own personal damage and healing. C4 can save Farina's energy requirement by a lot. When her elemental skill, Salon Solitaire, is active, once every 5 seconds Seconds, when the Salon members hit an enemy or when the Singer of Many Waters heals the active character, Farina will regenerate 4 energy. Pretty simple effect you don't need to pay attention to, but a really nice buff. Farina's C6 makes her a broken quickswap DPS. Let me explain, because this wall of text can seem pretty daunting. With this constellation, when Farina uses her skill, she'll be put into the center of attention state for the next 10 seconds or 6 hits. What this does is convert her normal charged and plunging attacks into Hydro that can't be overwritten, and they will have bonus HP scaling based on 18% of Farina's max HP. Secondly, any normal charged or plunging attack she does during this time will also have different effects that will trigger depending on her current Arca alignment. If she is Uzi aligned, the one with the Salon members, she will heal your party members as you attack. If she is instead Numa aligned, Farina's normal charged and plunging attacks are further buffed by another 25% of her max HP, but as you attack, all of your party members lose 1% of their HP per hit. This constellation is an absolutely crazy damage buff considering how, on the way, Farina's C2 super buffs her max HP, which can go well past 100k HP. The healing is a nice bonus, or should you decide to do more damage, you can have that too. The options and sheer power you're given make this an incredible constellation to have should you decide to pull for it. To wrap up on Farina's Farina's constellations, they are all major upgrades that scale off the preceding ones, and make her exponentially more powerful. She is already plenty good at C0, but should you decide to invest in her more, some good stopping points are C1, C2, and finally C6. With the constellations out of the way, what teams can Farina work in?
Before we get into entire team setups, let's go over the healers that can synergize with Farina to get the most fanfare stacks as quickly as possible. Starting off, your immediate 3 best options are Jean, Kokmi, and Baiju. Jean has a huge initial party wide heal on burst cast and very fast taking heal on your active character afterwards. As a bonus, she also has access to the Viridescent Venerer for a piece effect to further boost your team's damage. Kokomi has her Karage that will heal the active character as well as healing on normal or charge attack hits in her burst form. Baiju has a party wide heal in his skill as well as active character healing on his burst among other effects that are nice bonuses to have. Next up is Noelle, who is pretty similar to Kokomi in that she also heals on normal or charge attacks in her burst form. Mika can also be pretty similar to Jean in that he has a huge initial heal and more healing for the active character when they land specifically normal attacks. Sayu can basically be seen as a budget Jean with all of the same advantages. Charlotte, who is also rated up with Farina in 4.2, is also a great fit with Farina, although she does have her own high energy requirement. Yao Yao is another great option as she has active character healing on her skill and immense party wide healing from her burst. Bennett is a really good option as always, coming in with his broken attack buff and active character healing. Since that is the case, you can offer a more quick swap style team to cycle healing onto every character. Last recommendation I'd like to make is Cookie Shinobu. Shinobu can also be really good even if she is an active character healer, since she drains 30% of her own HP on her skill cast, so that can give you a lot of initial fanfare points. Moving on to the actual teams. Now, to avoid making this video a feature film, I'll be going over some of the rough archetypes because, let's face it, she's universally broken in most of every team you can think of putting her in. All of her teams consist of her and another healer, so let's get into it. Let's start easy. Mono Hydro. You can use 4 Hydro characters or 3 Hydros and an animal character to use the 4 piece set of your Descent Venerer. Good old water to activate the Hydro Resonance effect. This can be especially good since some of the other Hydro characters have partial or full HP scaling. Good Hydro characters for this are Shincho, Yelon, Ayato, Tartaglia, and Nuvillette. For your healers, Kokomi, Jean, Sayu, and Barbara fit the roles nicely. Second is Vaporize. Farina can work great at amplifying damage done by either her or a Pyro Carry. Though, one thing to note with the Pyro Carry route is that you may want to have another Hydro character like Shincho or Yelon in the party to consistently apply Hydro. With this team archetype, it follows the usual mold. Farina as the Hydro, and another one of the Hydros I just mentioned if you need it. Next being the Pyro character, which can be characters like Hu, Diluc, Yoimiya, and Shangling. You could also choose to run a semi-forward Vaporize team with Farina if you have enough Pyro application in between herself on member's attacks that would usually consist of Shangling, Bennett, and your VV holders such as Kazuha, Sucrus, or you double up on healers with Jean. Next up, you can choose to run Farina and Freeze since her Hydro application follows your character around. Tag in two crowd characters, an animal character for crowd control and Viridescent Venerer resistance reduction, and a healer. This team can be really flexible because a lot of the crowd cast can easily fit in here. Third are Hyper Bloom and Burgeon, both very easy reactions to pull off that need at least one Dendro, Hydro, and Electro or Pyro respectively. Farina doesn't actually buff the reaction itself since the damage comes from the level and EM of the Electro or Pyro character, but she can still buff the other sources of damage coming from the rest of the party. Good candidates for your Dendro applicator are Nahida, Yao Yao, Baiju, Alhatham, and Kale. In terms of Hyper Bloom, for the Electro slot, Shinobu is particularly good at it, and especially so when paired with Farina. Besides that, Raiden is also a very good option if you're already using another character as the healer. For Burgeon, you have a lot of choices that I won't fully go through here, but to give you a couple of examples, you can choose to run Toma on his own, or alternatively, Bennett and Kazuha to swirl Bennett's inspiration field to apply Pyro instead. You might want to have a second Hydro character to reduce Farina's ER needs, which can also be good for Hydro Resonance as well as generating more Dendro cores. That role can be filled in by most of the Hydro characters I mentioned earlier. An alternative to full Hyper Bloom is Quick Blue, where you're keeping a Quicken aura on enemies to trigger spread and aggro while you're generating seeds for a full Hyper Bloom. This can open up your options a lot, and just so long as the character is Hydro, Dendro, or Electro, this team archetype will be incredible. Just as Hyper Bloom and Burgeon goes, Nilu Bloom is also an option since Farina doesn't interrupt the requirements for Nilu's passive to work. Set up the rest of the team with two Dendro characters after Nilu, and you're good to go. Again, it doesn't boost the damage of the reaction itself, but it will help your other teammates do more damage. The last team archetypes I want to go through are the Hyper Carry teams. This includes Yola, Shao, Raiden, Wanderer, Ridesley, and basically anyone else that wants to stay on field for an extended 
extended amount of time. Farina serves as a universally great support that can slot into any of those to buff their damage. Put in each team's respective supports and healers, and they'll be amazing. To cap off the team section, Farina allows every character to use the four-piece set of Modern Shose Hunter because she drains the entire party's HP, as I mentioned earlier. If your characters use normal and charged attacks, it could be better for you to use Modern Shose Hunter instead of what you had before to stack more of your other stats instead of crit rate. With all of that said, let's do a Farina showcase to see how everything works. For this showcase, I'll be using Farina at level 90, holding a level 90 R5 Festering Desire, level 6 and 8 on her skill and burst talents respectively, with 2-piece Golden Troop and 2-piece HP percent. Here's the build. Let's get into the showcase, and action! Rain outlines your I'm going in! Let's light it up! Flames, purge! Let's wrap up this video. Farina is an insanely powerful support that can be used on any team. She's got Hydra application, her own massive damage, and brings some previously thought to be middling characters back to the stage. She's pretty simple to build, fully scaling off of HP, and while her ER requirement can seem steep at times, you can more often than not make up for it with her teammates and weapons. As the cherry on top, she is fully complete at C0, but should you decide to invest in them, her constellations make her exponentially more powerful at what she does, as well as enabling a quick swap DPS playstyle. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you back for another video. See ya.